Field General Insurance BABA Premier League has teams continue to battle for a playoff spot. Playing at the BCC gym, Corey McDonald led three players in double figures for Warriors, scoring a game-high 28 points and grabbing 10 rebounds. Ricardo Toussaint also had a good game, collecting 18 rebounds to go along with his 16 points, while Nicky King scored 13 in the 73-62 victory. Warriors are in fifth place, that's one outside of the playoff spots, but they do have a game in hand. Now for Tridents, Zachary Cave scored 14, Andrew Eiffel 12, and Jehu Lafuil, he got 11. Meanwhile, Orange 3 Pinelands defeated Pan American International Insurance Warrens. The Pine are now third in the standings after that victory, and they have a game in hand. CBC's Damien Best reports. Pinelands in black and orange taking on Warrens Sports Club. Warrens moving the rock, jumper, good. Warrens on a roll, and they made good use of the turnovers. A total of 28 in this one from the Pine. Dario Komobach with the finishing touches at 11. But Pinelands made the necessary adjustments up by two after one quarter. Anthony Barrow to Charles Van to pull bucket and the foul. Then Junior Moore with the old fashioned two, winning the battle in the paint. 12 points to his credit. Midway through the second quarter, Warrens keeping within striking distance. George Farrell, the dagger, three ball. Warrens now down by just one at the break. 38 to 39. Another three from upstairs. Well, if Warrens wanted a shootout, Pinelands had their weapons at the ready. Ian Alexander, the magic touch, three of his 19. Second half now. Well, I'd like to welcome you to the Jeremy Gill Show. Drive through the lane, up and in. Then serving up the good stuff. Sugar, game high, 27 points. The Pine extending their lead to 15, heading to the fourth, 68 to 53. Warrens in need of a couple stops and some offensive work. Alang, left hand, count it. Things got heated in this one as well. Every point vital. Steve Seeley, the hard fall on Alang. And everybody trying to separate the two. Well, that event only served as a driving force behind the Pines 24 point run. In the closing stages, Gill, Lone Ranger with the sniper's eye, makes it look so easy. Jamar King contributed 10, and Adrian Allman 12 for Warrens. But this was all about Pinelands in the final analysis, as they go on to defeat Warrens 79 to 65. Damien Best, CBC Sports. Now the football, Belfield came from a goal down to hammer rendezvous, five goals to two as they delivered the biggest upset of the night when the Digicel BFA Premier League continued at the BFA will the AstroTurf. Meanwhile, DirecTV Paradise missed a chance to go into a tie for a second spot after a 2-2 draw against Marcuson Bridens Hill. CBC's Sean Green reports. First game of the night, Paradise in the blue taking on Bridens Hill in the black. The former would take the lead in the 11th minute after seeing their first cross cleared and they whipped in another beautifully weird one. That's headed in by Armando Lashley. That's 1-0. Paradise will double their lead seven minutes after halftime. Elijah Wood coolly slots this one past the keeper's outstretched leg to make it 2-0. Second half now, and whatever Britain Hill discussed during the interval certainly worked. They grab one back through Mustafa Hack. The big number nine meets the pullback, takes the touch, and lets it fly. What a hit. 2-1, 59 minutes gone. It was end-to-end -end stuff after this. That is until Romel Boyce Hassel, the paradise keeper, after a Mustafa Hat cross. He bundles it home after Hat gave the assist to match his goal. It ended square, two goals apiece. We join the second game in the 22nd minute. Penalty given to Belfield in the red, and it's calmly taken to bring the score to one apiece after Shandell Samuel gave the rendezvous team in white the lead after just the 11th minute. Things would get even better for Belfield. They take the lead after a free kick whipped into the back stick, beats the keeper and finds Omar Primus, who upsets the gift and bundles it home 2-1 in the 54th minute. They were playing with their tails up now, but it was their rendezvous defense that shot themselves in the foot. A poorly headed back pass is intercepted by Henderson Richards, who makes it 3-1 two minutes later. 
The misery would continue for the boys in white. Richards, who started this move, would finish it. The resulting cross proves too difficult for the keeper than it should have been, and he spills it to Richards, who makes it 4-1. Five minutes later, the nightmare would continue. Nice pass out wide to spread the play, and the ball is played to the feet of Azarel Crony, who hits inside and beats the keeper, who had a bad night. 5-1 to Belfield. The rendezvous boys fought hard and got one back. They got a penalty, and Emerald George claimed their second in the 86th minute as the game finished 5-2 to Belfield. Sean Green, CBC Sports. Thanks, Sean. And in the night's other game, a lone goal from Jabbar Green in the 27th minute gave Weymouth Wells the 1-0 win over UWI Blackbirds. Now, despite that defeat, Blackbirds still lead the standings with 27 points. Staying with football, defending champions Toronto FC of Canada will join a record number of teams for this year's Banks International Masters Football Festival. Now at the media launch recently at the Banks Breweries in Newton, CBC's Armory Burke was there to report. In its 20th year, the Banks Barbados International Masters Football Festival is the largest ever in its history. A record 24 overseas teams will join local clubs for three days of competition. What's very exciting this year is we're bringing in a team called Republica Sapriska from Canada. They're all Croatians living in Canada. So we've got an Eastern European feel to the tournament. And also Greenwich Pumas from Connecticut in the USA. They are all Argentinians living in the USA. So we've got South America, we've got Eastern Europe, We've got Britain, Canada, the USA, and the whole Eastern Caribbean represented. With the addition of the Kickstart Club, the hosting grounds have been extended to four, the other three being Wanderers, Dover, and Carlton. Another introduction this year is an over-50s division, with some nine teams registered. That came about because uh, a few guys on the side who are in their late 50s were playing over 40s, and they said they're sick and tired at the age of 58, chasing a 40-year-old. Have you ever tried doing that for seven consecutive games? Can't you do something about it? So the minute we mooted the idea of an over 50s at last year's press conference, immediately, as you remember, at least four or five teams saying, we're bringing an over 50s team next year. Hallelujah. So, uh, yeah, so a lot of old faces are coming back. People like Queen's Park, FF Crew, uh, Unity. All these teams were abandoning it because it was just simply too old. Now they're coming back in force. Title sponsors Banks and the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. have pledged to be on board for another three years. I think that it's actually perfect for us because it tends to fall within a period that's a, a traditionally soft period for us, that being the month of May. So we've got an influx of visitors and, and it helps to more or less stem that seasonality, if, if we can call it, call it that. In addition, I think it more or less embodies all of what we think that an event of this nature should be about. That is, we've got the competitive spirit, but it's all about the festival. Over the last two years, we've increased our sponsorship to a title sponsorship because for us, this is a very strong event in the calendar. Um, it, for us, it, you know, it allows us to expose by its bear to the international and the regional participants that come in, the competitors that come and uh, showcase. So not only do you get, get a chance to see great competition on the field of our, not just Barbadians, but regional and international players doing their thing, but they get a chance to showcase our culture, um, our hospitality, um, as well as enjoy great beer, Banks beer. The Banks Barbados International Masters Football Festival runs from May 13th to 16th, with the big finals on wait Monday at the Wanderers Ground. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Tonight's Olympic moment honors an athlete who did the rare double of winning the 200 and 400 meters, with the 200 being quite challenging. Olympic Moments, brought to you by Sajikar General Insurance, Sandals Barbados, and Good Time Snacks. Atlanta, 1996, Marie Jose Perec of France runs down Merlin Otti of Jamaica in the women's 200 meter final. Can Marie Jose Perec pull off the double? She's out of the blocks well, so is Merlin Otti. Otti really running pretty well. Parlette Gibri coming on. Coming to the top of the home straightaway. Merlin Adi is in front. Perek has some work to do. Marianne Yadi is there. And so is 
Olympic Moments, brought to you by Sajikar General Insurance, Sandals Barbados, and Good Time Snacks. Well, that's sports for now. I'll be back at 8.30 where we'll have highlights of today's IPL game. But up next, business. Your pockets with 20,000.